Hey, could you comment below and tell me what your favorite make and model ATV is? Here's a hint. Mine is featured in this video. There he is. Hey there everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cars and Crafts. As you can see I've got a Bombardier behind me, 2004. It's an Outlander 400. Today we'll be working on the front suspension. So on this Outlander it needs a new right front CV axle and new shocks. The previous owner did some artwork. You can see the black paint here and here and even on the gauge cluster and the uh, handlebars. It's all black. Anyways, got a little too happy with this one here and it ruined the shock. It collapses but then takes forever to rebound. I'm going to go through it with you step by step on how to take the front suspension all apart including the axle and the brake caliper and rotor. First things first you got to get this rack off the front so that you can get to the top of the shocks. Start by unscrewing these caps once you've got the cap off, you have access to a nut on the top and you'll need a deep socket to get a hold of it. What you'll find is a really long bolt and mine were rusty. So I would recommend spraying some blaster on it first, whatever your preferred penetrant is. After you get all those screws off, you can take off the rack. And once you've got the front rack off, you have access to the top of the shocks. Go ahead and get this snap ring off with a pair of snap ring pliers. And so you have a better understanding of what's going on here. This is the what the shock looks like. You got this nut on top and you've got something you can hold on to here. On top you'll want to get the nut off with a 42 millimeter. This is what I measured. I don't have a 42 millimeter so I used a 1 and 11 sixteenths. Okay. So that wasn't working. So I went and got myself one and three quarters little crow's foot wrench. All right, this seems to be working. I'm just holding it, holding it in there with my fingers and it's pressing up against the brace up there and I'm just loosening it I think the impact wrench was just jarring it too much and it slipped loose every time
loose. Now I'll loosen up to not strain so hard a little bit. So you have an idea what was going on under here. Moving the breaker bar up top made everything want to come this way. So I just held it in place. And what it did was wedge itself up against this metal bracket here. And as long as I was holding it in place, it wouldn't slip. It took a lot of force, so get yourself a big breaker bar. Like this one. Nice big breaker bar. It's got to be what? 24 inches? Two feet? So I noticed that this top circle here doesn't line up with the bottom circle here. And that's because these rivets are broken. And the same thing happened over here but these rivets were completely missing. So I went ahead and replaced them. I have a rivet gun right there and 3 16 rivets. They're just pop rivets, easy to do. Just drill out the old ones. <clears throat> and pop in the new ones. line up those holes and it'll slide in. Next we'll get the tie rod disconnected here. Okay. Alright, so hold the tie rod end with a 17 millimeter and you can loosen the nut on the bottom with a 19. Now to remove the bolts that hold the bottom of the shock. You got an 18 on this side and a 16 on this side. Take off this dust cap. Ah, go ahead and pry on it. And now you've got access to the spindle nut. <clears throat> Remove the cotter pin. It's a 32. To keep it from spinning, put a hammer handle on your studs and hit it real hard with the impact. <clears throat> Probably should have done this earlier. There it goes. All right, now we can remove the axle. The, uh, the hub comes off first. Set that down over there. <clears throat> and the axle slides out of the hub. Like that. Hey everybody, just want to take a quick second 
to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe button. It'll really help me out a lot. Thank you. Next, get the brake caliper off. You do that by twisting the axle until you get to one of these bolts. There's one here and one there. So it's a T40 Torx. accidentally pushed the button so it went back in and then broke off. Yes! Alright. <laughs> don't, don't do that my friends. I just broke off the tip of my Torx. I think I'll still be able to use this Torx to get this loose and then I'll have to buy a new one. Looks like. Now the brake caliper should come loose, like so, and it can just hang there, Let's tuck it back in there. And now the axle and rotor assembly can come out. Next, you can unbolt the lower control arm. Just use two 15 millimeter wrenches. So now is a good time to empty and refill your differential fluid. <coughs> I suggest strongly that you use a synthetic 7590, something like this here, and 75W140 for the rear. So how do you put it? Other way. There you go. Oh, you're getting it. How far do I put it? Well, you want to open it all the way, so you're going to have to spin it a bunch. In case you're wondering, we're trying to get the drain plug loose. Alright, this should be easy now. Just use your hands. Mm-hmm. It's gonna start spilling out. There you go. Got it. Oh, that is a tough bugger. Oh, I almost hurt myself. Now it's time to disassemble the old shock so that we can get the new shock on. So the new shock doesn't come with a spring. We gotta get this spring off and put it on here. They do sell new springs, so you could go that direction, but you still gotta get this uh, retainer off. So I'll show you how to do that. If you don't have a set of spring compressors, you can rent them at a car parts store. They're called McPherson Strut Spring Compressors. Place it on the spring spreading it out as far as possible. The same thing on the opposite side. And then push these retainers in. Then you go ahead and tighten these down and switch back and forth so that it's compressing the spring down evenly.
So if it seems that the more you tighten it, the harder it is to get this off, just pull up on this and it'll come loose. This foam rubber stopper here is gonna squeeze and keep this from wanting to come off. So just push that down. Hold, hold up on this and push down on the foam rubber. There. Now this should come off. Just like that. Now there's those two pieces. Now with a bigger spring setup for a car, let's say, this spring would just come off now, but it's binding on, on certain points, this stopper and possibly the shock here. So now you've got to loosen this all up, take the spring off and install it on the new shock. Place the spring on the new shock, pull the shock center up, push the foam rubber stop back down a little bit, place your spring compressors back on the spring, install the re retainers, and tighten it down. Now when you're installing these retainers, you'll want to set them 180 degrees from each other. So if this bottom one is facing this way, you want the top one to face the other way. Like that. They keep each other from falling off. Try to loosen these up evenly, a little bit at a time on each side, and do it slowly so that you can try and get these to seat in on the top of the spring, right in the center of that spring. And there you have it. Your spring's ready to go back in. Now you can remove the rotor off of the axle. These are 13 millimeter bolts. Take a minute to inspect where your seal is going to ride on these axles. I bought a used axle, so mine was all rusty. It's not perfect now, but I cleaned it up with 180 grit and then 320 grit sandpaper. Um, this surface I left alone. There's two different mating surfaces one to keep oil in and one to keep water and dirt out. So clean those up and get it ready to install. And now you can install the rotor on your new axle. Next, you'll go ahead and slide that axle right back in. You'll have to twist it back and forth and hit it like this. And just be patient. It, uh, it's a really long shaft and it has to find its way into the hole. So don't hit it too hard. Just nice solid taps like that. And up and down, twisting left and right, and you'll get it in. 
Next, you'll put the brake caliper back on. Don't forget to put in these two bolts. Move it so that you can have access to each of those bolts individually. Next, you can put the control arm back on, making sure to thread the axle into the hub as you're doing it. Make sure you got the right bolts. These are for the front shocks. Now I would wait until the ATV is on the ground so that the control arm is up a little bit to tighten these down. You want it to be tight in the position that it normally rides. Next, you can slide the shock up into its hole. And secure it with the nut. I had to clean out the nut with a wire brush and it threads on perfectly now. So next, you're going to want to put the hub back on and tighten down the nut and install your cotter pin and bend it. Now that it's secured up top, you can slide it into position down here. <clears throat> Next, go ahead and tighten up the bolts on the bottom of the shock. You've got a 19 nut and a 16 bolt head. Next, you can go ahead and tighten down the top of the shock. Use your one and three quarters underneath and your one and 11 sixteenths up top. It doesn't need to be super tight, just snug. And then we will install this snap ring. Snug. Got your snap ring pliers. Open that up. Get it to set right in there and good to go. Next you can go ahead and reinstall the tie rod end. Make sure one of the washers goes up here. The other washer goes there. You can hold the top with a 17 millimeter wrench, tighten it down with a 19 on the bottom. And reinstall the cotter pin. Now that she's back on the ground, we can go ahead and tighten up the control arm bolts. Thanks for watching guys. I'm always looking for another project to work on so leave some comments below and let me know what kind of ATV you're working on and maybe I'll buy one and fix it up. Thanks again and always remember stay crafty. Quick
from me. Oops. Miles, that's not too bad. I had to clean out my nut. Then when you spit that out, then do it. Okay. Ow. 